competition than boys were barred from universities and could only obtain low paid jobs women's sole purpose was to marry and reproduce women were indoctrinated from birth to accept their lowly status and yet many did rebel in 1808 was born a young man who grew up with the vision to change things around him this young man was unhappy with the treatment meted out to women and wanted a better life for them this young man was the first indian freemason who more than 125 years ago displayed the courage and zeal to have the portals of the sacred citadel of freemasonry thrown open to indians he was the first indian member of the royal ashatic society of england honorary commissioner in the court of requests judge of bombay small causes court he was the first indian to be appointed assistant collector of customs twice sheriff of bombay this is the man you should honor my son manik ji kasi ji the year was 1837 <laughs> Captain Morris B. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I'm so glad you could join us to celebrate my promotion today. Always a pleasure, my dear friend. Congratulations on your promotion. I must say, very well deserved. Thank you, sir. Let me introduce you to my guest. Sure. Lady Rothfield. Hello. Mr. and Mrs. Wakefield. How do you do? Lord and Lady Montford. Please meet you. Pleasure. Mr and Mrs Blake my pleasure pleasure and captain and mrs smith hello hello mr manik ji would you like to do the honors to say a few words on this glorious occasion today of course yes to captain morris be on his promotion to, to captain morris be thank you my dear friends let the celebration begin
When will that happy day arrive when such music will be heard in our native households? When will our daughters walk with their heads held high, educated, well-spoken, equal with men in society? When will they emerge from men's shadows, go out confidently into the world and contribute to society with their own worth? Where do our women stand? They are not even exposed to the word education. Literacy will bring them out of their housebound exile. But where do I start? It's not going to be easy. I don't see any opening. Think, Manikji, think. I wish my daughters could be like the women I see here today. But why only my daughters? I want all our native girls to be educated. Education begins at home. Yes, that's it. My son was all fired up with the new thought. He thought of nothing else but finding a way out. He had visions of native girls going to school, learning to read and write in English, learning to play music. This made him restless. Egypt is located in the northwestern part in the continent of Africa. The River Nile divides this country into two distinct physiographic parts. What? This? What was that you read? Physiographic. See? You fool! It's physiographic. Physiographic, physiographic. I get that. Physiographic. I remember my teacher telling us about the Sphinx, Pyramids and the pleasant coast of Egypt. Sphinx? Sphinx? At the Sumolis? Just go away. That's none of your business. Don't get your meat. Don't get your meat. Don't get your meat. Don't get your how the British women carried themselves. The way they dressed, the way they spoke, their mannerisms. They were given the same amount of respect and importance as men. Do you know why? This was because they were educated. No, I have made up my mind. I want to educate my daughters. They will be taught English and music. Good day, Madam. Good day, Mr. Monikji. I have read through your credentials 
and Yogi can trust you in educating my elder daughter Kuvaga. She should be taught English and music. I want her to be able to freely read, write, and converse in the English language. It shall be done, Mr. Kasimji. Girls, don't need education today. That's where you're wrong, boys. Everybody needs to be educated. Don't see. Girls aren't meant for society.